I'm Pastor Brian Paulson, and this is The Message. Thank you for listening here in Libertyville, in Lake County, or around the world. Center your heart now through the prayer for illumination, listen deeply to Holy Scripture, and then let God's Word speak to you. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, through your holy light, cleanse us of distracting thoughts and allow us to embrace your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Our first reading comes from the fourth chapter of the book, Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one because they have good return for their hard work. If either should fall, one can pick up the other. But how miserable are those who fall and don't have a companion to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they can stay warm. But how can anyone stay warm alone? Also, one can be overpowered, but two together can put up resistance. A three-ply core doesn't easily snap. Here ends our first reading. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was a little less than two miles away from Jerusalem. Many Jews had come to comfort Martha and Mary after their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. While Mary remained in the house, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask God, God will give you. Jesus told her, Your brother will rise again. I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though they die. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, God's Son, the one who is coming into the world. The teacher is here and he's calling for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to Jesus. He hadn't entered the village, but was still in the place where Martha, Martha had met him. When the Jews who were comforting Mary in the house saw her get up quickly and leave, they followed her. They assumed she was going to mourn at the tomb. When Mary arrived where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying also, he was deeply disturbed and troubled. Jesus asked them, Where have you laid him? Lord, come and see. Jesus began to cry. See how much he loved him? But some of them questioned and said, He healed the eyes of the man born blind. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Faith and friendship is one of the most important things that we could have to relate to in our lives. In my opinion, friendship is part of life and it's very valuable for everyone to have a few good friends who you can trust. In the book of John, chapter 11, verses 28 to 36, Jesus wept for his friend who had just died. We might not think that part of Jesus' work among us was to make friends. However, having friends is simply a part of life that occurs to everyone, even Jesus. In my experiences, whenever I'm sad or need someone to talk to, my friends are always there for me. This one time, my dog had hurt his leg and I found out that he would be needing a surgery and I was really upset. So I called my friend and I was crying and she listened to what I had to say and helped calm me down. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter four, verses nine to 12, it's mentioned how friends are there to pick you up when you fall. In this example, not only did my friend help me work through my emotions, but she was also sad for me. And in life, there are going to be sad things that you can't do anything about, such as a loved one passing away. And sometimes all you really need to help you get through it is someone who will just listen to what you are going through. There's a famous saying that grief is love with nowhere to go. I found this saying very powerful because if you love somebody very much and suddenly they aren't in your life anymore, you're stuck with a lot of very strong emotions, and most of the time it hurts. But instead of focusing on the negative, try and remember that you do have people who care about you, and it probably hurts them as well to see you upset. The people who stick by you during the hard things in life are truly a gift. And try your best to remember that bad things are a part of life. You have to remember that God is by your side even if it doesn't feel like it. 
When I'm upset, I don't turn away from God, but instead I turn towards him. I usually pray and tell him what's bothering me, and it helps me to remember that I'm not only loved by him, but by many others on this planet. Another example of when a friend has helped me through a rough time is when my grandfather died. This happened at a really young age for me, and it was very upsetting. At his funeral, one of my best friends showed up and was there for me. Having her there helped me to take my mind off my grandfather's passing, and it was easier for me to be there. A few months ago, this friend's grandmother passed away. I knew her, and she was a really lovely woman and very sweet. I was at her funeral and was there to comfort my friend, and I really hope I helped her as much as she helped me all those years ago. And that's exactly what friendship is all about. Friendship is being comfortable and happy around someone and helping them when they need you. You don't get anything in return except for the fact that you know someone is there for you. And lots of the times, that's the best reward of all. Faith helps us to remember that we should always care for one another because it is the right thing to do. I am so thankful that I have such amazing people in my life, and I hope you all have someone like that too. Hello, everyone. My name is Arwen Tallander, and I am a senior this year at Libertyville High School. I have been attending this church for my entire life, was baptized and confirmed here, and have been involved in many activities. I was once one of those adorable children wearing white robes in the Joyful Noise Choir. I went on to participate in more choirs, later chimes, and now youth bells. Crush building, being the candle bearer at Christmas Eve services, and the Snowflake Queen sermon around Christmas time are all very fond memories. I've also enjoyed being involved in all youth activities from Mad Tweens all the way through Senior High Fellowship. I am so grateful for all the memories and experiences and the way they have, they have fostered important lifelong relationships. So it brings me great pleasure to be able to give back to this congregation after all you've done for me. As we heard in the passage from John, Jesus' words to Martha stood out to me. I am the resurrection, I am the life, he says. And as I prepared to give this message today, this reminded me of my many times at Covenant Point Bible Camp, which is the summer camp I attended as a youth and now work at during summers. These words that Jesus says are in the lyrics to one of the many worship songs we would enthusiastically sing along to. Belting out that Jesus is the resurrection and the life was doing much more than develop my vocal cords, though it did do that. Our shared love of camp and singing our praise made for many lasting relationships. At my time at Bible camp, in addition to various church functions, opened the deep and opened the gate to deep and meaningful relationships. As I've experienced, Christians tend to be the most loving and kind people. And I believed that growing up as a pe person of faith makes you a more perceptive, sincere, and overall better, better friend. There was a young man I knew from Covenant Point Bible Camp who was a camper in the senior high age group, except he wasn't in high school, he was about 20 years old. He was also on the autism spectrum with limited verbal communication. And while I didn't have the pleasure to get to know him personally, I did observe that any time music played, this young man would bring out the most intense dance moves with as much intensity as Napoleon Dynamite. If you haven't seen Napoleon Dynamite, you really gotta check it out. You couldn't help but to be filled with joy watching him, so much so that one onlooker joined him, and that eventually led to a crowd. These adoring fans would circle around him, performing the same over-the-top dance moves as he led the group. Watching and participating in the dance battle gave me deep feelings of love and joy. And as I reflected on this story, the values of love, joy, kindness, and goodness all seemed familiar to me. These are all fruits of the Spirit, as described in Galatians. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. These fruits show how one can embody and live through the Spirit. And seeing this young man's many interactions and relationships, it was evident to me that the Spirit was at work. In many settings, he may have been viewed as the strange boy with even stranger dance moves. However, because of the embodiment of the spirit, deep bonds of friendship and expressions of joy came forth. When examining more of my own relationships through this lens, I realized something. It's natural for people to view friendships as transactional. What can I gain from this person or what can I give them? 
I've especially viewed this line of thinking in high school. Many people won't engage with you unless they feel you can give them something, like an elevated social status or homework answers. <laughs> Many of you may even remember that being the, the case during your time at school. Perhaps that is still the case during your work, professional, or personal relationships. Upon reflection, you may even realize that this is how you interact with others in your relationships now. However, this is not what the passage in Galatians is expressing. The fruits of the Spirit are not about gaining or even giving joy. It is about being joy. And when we embody these fruits in our lives, we can hope that they will spread to those around us. In the story I shared earlier of the camper, the onlookers who came to dance with the young man are a good example of this. They weren't trying to gain anything or give him anything, simply just to be present in his joy. For those of you who are more reserved or not comfortable dancing in a crowd, there are other ways to express love and friendship less publicly. Believe it or not, I actually do not like to be the center of attention like this. Um, so when I decided to pursue my Gold Award this year, I chose something behind the scenes. For those of you who don't know, the Gold Award is the highest achievement in Girl Scouts and is considered equivalent to rank of Eagle in Boy Scouts. And because this church has shown me the value of outreaches that help others, such as pads, the food pantry, and mission trips, I chose to work with the Equestrian Connection, which is a horse therapy center that provides rehabilitation and treatment to a wide variety of clients of all ages. Their facility had an attic space being used for storage, and between the exposed insulation, lack of flooring, and a small hatch as a doorway, this space was less than ideal for the safety and the efficiency of those employees using it. With the unique skill set of working I have, thanks to my dad, thanks dad, <laughs> and a group of very generous donors, I was able to convert this space to a fully functioning 130 square foot closet equipped with flooring, shelving, walls, and a full size doorway. And especially considering this space was used as storage for their annual fundraiser to further their good work, I was elated to provide any help. While my work at Equestrian Connection was not directly with people, I was still able to observe bonds and community being formed. Every client who walked through the main doors was greeted with open arms from staff and volunteers. Even in sessions where riding riders were facing fears and pushing themselves, they always left with a smile on their face. In this situation, I wasn't the one providing direct support, but I was still able, able to help others to further their mission. In this service and in my time with you, we have been talking about friendship. And conventionally, we think of friendship as being with the people who look like us, live near us, think like us, have the same values as us, vote like us, dress like us, have the same resources as us, and have the same faith as us. My hope for you this morning is that you leave this service with a broader perspective of friend. With Christ as our example, let, let us seek out ways to share love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control with the people who look different than us, have different values than us, have a different political affiliation than us, eat different food than we do, have a different sexual orientation than we do, wear different clothes than you, or have a different worldview than we, we do. Through friendship like this, we can further the spread of God loves. Amen. Thank you for listening on our podcast, or through our YouTube playlist of sermons, be sure to forward this message to someone who you believe is seeking God's word today.